35192. Want to send a text? AlanCoxShow.com is where you can watch. Uh, Mary will join us live from Chicago tomorrow. Uh, the Bill Squire Friday get down, of course, uh, tomorrow. Another short week next week. Uh, next Friday will be preempted by Guardians Baseball. We've got to be off. Uh, that's not a bad reason. They will take on the Cincinnati Reds. A little preseason action out there from uh, Goodyear. Uh, for people hitting me up about Depeche Mode tickets, I will have those for you next week, uh, too. Now, if you still need an Alan Cox show fixed next Friday, you can always come see me at the Underground Lounge in Warren. You can get those tickets at BillSquire.com. And they're they're starting to move, so don't wait. Let's help us out, and uh, you don't want to be left out. Now, that's if you need an Alan Cox show fix. If you need an Alan Cox fix, spoiler alert, I won't be there. But right. Bill will be there, and that's more than enough. Um, but, yes, I will have those um, Depeche Mode tickets for you next week. Uh, probably around 520. Also, Mac Basketball is back at the Romo Fijo. If um, that's something you enjoy, I'll have uh, Brit Floyd tickets for you. You've heard Brit Floyd before, right? The uh, British tribute to Pink Floyd. Yes, I have. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, Pink Floyd is already British, but Brit Floyd is... Uh... Hey! hey! Chitchers! Lift it, it's alone! All in our distance, I know they break in the wall. So good. So, so good. They're going to be doing a Nautica in May. And if you want to see your Cleveland Monsters, your hockey fan, Cold Steel on Ice. Uh, Monsters tickets next week, too. The uh, Cavs play tonight back here at home. After the All-Star break, your Cavaliers against the Denver Nuggets. 7 o'clock tonight here on MMS. I was reading a profile of a guy who used to pitch for the Yankees and is currently the oldest living Major League Baseball player. A guy named, he's 98 years old, and he lives in California. A guy named Art Shalek. He fought in World War II. He won three World Series rings with the New York Yankees. And he's the oldest living MLB player. He'll be 99 in April. He played with guys like uh, Lefty Gomez. Paul Wehner, Joe DiMaggio. Uh, but he wasn't uh, particularly tall. He was 5'9". And so along the way, he had to uh, argue with a lot of managers about uh, teams he wanted to play for. He wanted to play for the San Francisco Seals. That's how old this guy is. He said that <laughs> he played for a team that uh, the Yankees demoted a struggling rookie named Mickey Mantle to the minors to make room uh, for um, Art Shalek after he was rebuffed by Seals manager Lefty O'Doul. God, I love old baseball names. They're so good. So good. But um, uh, anyway, uh, the oldest living member, uh, a player before, was an outfielder named George Elder who played for the St. Louis Browns. He died at 101, and that uh, bumped Art Shalek up, and now he's the oldest living former Major League Baseball player. And after that, it's Bill Greeson, who became the first black pitcher to play for the St. Louis Cardinals. So this guy's out there living. But it is wild, because I'm reading this article, and I'm looking at this guy, and he's in front of his very impressive wall of memorabilia. Spoiler alert, a lot of black and white photos. Uh, but a lot of bats... A lot of balls, as one would expect. You know, Yankees caps, uh, black and white photos of him with uh, DiMaggio and, and all the greats. And he's still alive. And this was this guy's life. But you're like, all of our accomplishments, whatever you have accomplished in your life, will all be relegated eventually to the ash heap of history. This is a guy who had an amazing career, but he's 98 now. And the only people who know about it are the people closest to him. The most prominent figures of their time 
are just shadows to everybody else, right? The most famous people in the world at one time you've never heard of because their time came and went. People who, they, you know, they were uh, kings of their respective areas of expertise. Hollywood stars, you know, from, you know, pick a decade, the 30s, right? Who was the most famous actress of the 1930s? Actress? I don't know. You don't was it, either. Was it um the one from Aviator? What's that? Or was that later? The, Audrey the, Hepburn. Oh, no. The 30s? I don't know when she was. Probably the 50s. Was she the 50s? Most famous actress of the 1930s. Here are your names. All right. Now, some of them you might have heard. I've heard of a couple of these, but I mean, you know, Clara Bow. No. Heard of her. Jean Arthur. Nope. Nope. Irene Dunn. Okay, yes. Catherine Hepburn, maybe. Is yeah, Catherine about. Hepburn, yeah. Loretta Young. Carol Lombard. Greta Garbo. Okay, so we've heard these names. But I can go further back. Let me go to the 20s. The most famous actresses of the 20s. Yeah, I guess we've heard of these people. <laughs> this is really not supporting my thesis well, here. I but have it. You know, Marlena Dietrich. Yeah, no. Greta Garbo. You're a bad you're a bad example to somebody pick this out. You don't know things that are happening now. <laughs> right. right, okay. Mary you Pickford, Norma Talmadge, Gloria Swanson, of course, heir to the frozen dinner fortune. Mm. Uh I'm sorry, that's Tucker Carlson. Claudette Colbert, Norma Shearer. Again, Faye Ray, the original King Kong. Yeah, okay, these people I've heard of. But again, I'm fifty one. You'd be forgiven for not knowing who these people are. Pauline Nagarin. Alice Terry, Patsy Ruth Miller. These were the biggest names of their era. And here's the oldest living MLB baseball player. And you've had this great life. You've had, uh, you know, but nothing lasts forever. Let me reiterate, we all die alone. And the, now clarify what that means so people aren't like, what? Uh, I know people, they died on an airplane. <laughs> they were alone. <laughs> right. I don't mean physically alone. I mean when you die, You're you alone. you do it alone. That's right. You do it. You can be surrounded by people in you your corporeal even, form, but you will we will all die alone. But you can even be can't take anyone with you. With someone that is also dying at the same time, but you're having your own separate deaths. That's right. Uh, I have heard from one bureau chief in Rosemont, Illinois. Who was hoping to get to Mary's show tomorrow night. Alan, I never knew who Howard Hughes was until I saw The Aviator. Oh, was that the movie? I was thinking about um, Aviator was DiCaprio playing Howard Hughes. Yeah. I was thinking of, didn't Kate Blanchett play Amelia Earhart? Or was that in that movie? No, it was in that movie, but she okay. played, uh, not Amelia Earhart, I think she played Hepburn. Oh, she did? I don't know if it's... Oh, she's like, ah, yeah. hello, that, that North yeah. Atlantic accent that they yeah. all had for a while. The Aviator. Yeah, she was Catherine Hepburn. Okay. That's the movie that uh, if I need to fall asleep, I'll just turn that one on, and I'm out in minutes. Really? Yeah, it just knocks I like the, me out. It's got a good cast. It's got a great cast. Alec it's Baldwin, not even a Kate bad Beckinsale, movie. Foxy. It's just, it's so, I don't know, there's just something about it that just knocks me right out. I like historical movies because everybody plays someone. Mm -hmm. I like that. Like Adam Scott's in it. Like he's, yeah. Yeah, there's. Johnny Maya. Hey, I'm Johnny Maya. See, I'm Adam Scott. Right. right. Alan Alda's in it. Jude Law. Gwen Stefani played Gene Harlow. There you go. There you go. Hmm. Um, oh, that uh, iHeartRadio app that people, oh, I got to tell you, boy, if you haven't used it yet, oh, mm, magnifique. It has taken the world by storm. So easy to use. Guess what it costs? Oh, it's free. Oh, my God. Now you're speaking my language. Yeah, I'd like to talk to the man of a thousand voices. Can I hear number 863 <laughs> and 409, please? Thank you. Hmm. I have to go. Let me, I, I, let me, I got to do a little mental thing here. Voice number eight. I am the man of a thousand voices. You might have heard me mention it before. He wanted number 800. This is number 863. <clears throat> 
That's number 863. Oh, that's, that's well, what you yeah, say? Listen, how, how many, I can't do miles of dialogue. I got a thousand different voices. Just it's say, just I cry at the solstice steps. Little nuances. Yeah. What? Say, I cry, I like to cry at the solstice steps in that voice. <clears throat> I like to cry at the surface steps. All right. 863. All right. Done. That's my hair lip character. Mm. Uh, and number 409 is what he said. Hey, don't try to steal my formula. Get it? Mm-hmm. Uh, so there you go. Those are number 863 and number 409. It's not always easy to remember them, but I'll tell you what. When called upon to do it, I can usually do it with relative ease. And But as is the case with that picture, will anyone remember this after I'm gone? No. Nor should they. Like I said, it'll just end up footprints in the sand is how it will end up. Just a distant memory. It won't even take that long. So usually I uh, hear from my alma mater when they want money. And since I finally paid off (laughs) finally paid off my student loans, Year before last, anytime uh, they hit me up, uh, b- although, make no mistake, your university will hit you up the entire time you're still paying off your student loans. You uh, have hit me up once. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> they have hit me up once. I mean, Man, you're living a charm life. Well, university of Akron hasn't hit you up one time. Maybe they'll listen to the show. Maybe, but I, I've been hit up more by like my professors than the actual school. Now that yeah, I say you that, have. Now. But uh, not for money. No, they ask me to come back and talk to their class. They do not. Yes, they do. Do they put talk in quotation marks? No, they ask oh. me to come speak to their class. Why don't you? I do. I have. Oh, you do? I've, I've done it like twice, and then I've gone back to my high school twice. Not Oberlin, but uh, JVS. Hmm. When was the last time you went to U of A? Uh, this was, I feel like it was either <clears throat> right... Maybe during the pandemic or after, like, or maybe like right after, because I remember how dead the campus was, and it was like on a Thursday. So, it, it was. I just saw University of Akron kid got drafted into the USFL. What's that? The it was a football league thirty five years ago, but they're bringing it back because two of the teams are going to use Canton as their home field. Oh, the Pittsburgh Maulers and the New Jersey Generals. This is an eight team league. They're trying to bring back. You got the XFL and the USFL and all this. But their first, they just did their first college draft, and they drafted uh, a lineman from University of Akron to the New Jersey team. He's going to play for the Generals. There's a lot of talented athletes that go to Akron. Like, it's not, it's not a school that is lacking in talent. It's just we don't get the recognition and the cred that we deserve. Well, he transferred in his last year. He went to the University of Wyoming. And then he, um, I guess he was the black guy in Wyoming. And then he transferred his fifth and final year at University of Akron. Anyway, I digress. Uh, My alma mater, Northwestern University, has hit me up because they have developed over there. Their researchers uh, have developed the first battery-powered wearable device to track how much people use their voices might seem like a narrow uh, focus group here. But this is a way to alert people via their phone uh, so that the vocal fatigue doesn't set in. This right? is amazing. So this is for I singers. I want to put this on my girlfriend's phone. For anyone, <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who talks regularly, of course, since I have made a career out of talking, they hit me up and they said, hey, listen, as a, well, not a notable alum, as an alum... As a former tuition-paying unit, uh, perhaps you would be able to benefit from this new smart technology. So it's basically, it senses when your voice needs a break, and it will tell you when to stop talking. So coaches, teachers, anyone who, you, you know. So I said, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll, I'd be happy to try this out. So it goes on for a long, you know, you can talk for long periods of time before it will tell you to stop talking. So I imagine that it, it um, oh, I'm sorry, I've got a. 
Oh, time to pick up the slack. I didn't go to college, so I will never have anyone reach out to me in this way. But Alan has to take a break from talking right now. So uh, Pound Cake and I I think that's to... a long enough break. Okay. I'm sure that is. Oh. <laughs> that's aggressive. Okay, I didn't know if you were, is <laughs> It's telling me that I'm, I need to... Speak. Okay, well, all right. I just wanted to make sure that I knew what was going on mm-hmm. here. Pound Kick, do you think if they uh, put this on your phone... It's like immediately... It would immediately I, I go off. off. I can't turn it off. <laughs> take it, I take it into, like, the genius bar, and they're like, uh, we don't know what to do either. <laughs> we're just going to need you to stop talking. I've, just been, I've been silent for six weeks. I would love to have this so that anytime anyone's... Not for myself, but like anybody else, I, when I want them to stop talking, I just hit this alarm and just be like, oh, your voice is tired. You need to stop. We've had enough of that. That's so rude. <laughs> uh, <my laughs> so I'm just going to be silent the entire rest of the show? The only person that doesn't seem to trigger it is me, and I hope I don't because then if I get the alarm, then who's going to talk? See, this is why I'm not sacrificing my life for y'all. Y'all don't even want to hear what I got to say, so therefore why I got to save the world. I'm shutting up. <laughs> Get on my nerves. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Listen, I think that I've rested myself enough that um, I you, can. What? Could you imagine if I was just doing a, a live read and it just goes off? People would have heard, like, what the hell's going on? Is a fire drill happening while he's trying to do a. <clears throat> Whatever. I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, you are. Anyway, that's something that's, uh, boy, it's a lot of fun. They've, uh, uh, this sounds like, yeah, they can pitch it to singers and coaches and teachers. It seems like that uh, that's the theoretical use. Practical use is seem very, very limited. I don't know how many people really need to be concerned about vocal fatigue and injury, but listen, it's publisher parish at universities. They got to research something and they got to publish it. And this will be in the proceedings the National Academy of Sciences. And this is a little postage stamp device that uh, you stick to your upper chest so it's picking up subtle vibrations. I have a question. Yeah. I'm afraid to talk too loud. Um, <laughs> does that count for laughing? Like if you laugh, will it go? I'm out. Does it count for laughing? I mean, I guess it depends on... Uh, I, like vocal fatigue. You could get vocal fatigue from laughing. I guess you could, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Not from this show, but. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to get vocal fatigue from laughing at this program. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh-huh. Some people have like a hearty laugh. <laughs> a hearty laugh. Will that <laughs> stop you from getting vocal fatigue? <laughs> My jar. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, laughing at.